Uh, good day, folks. So yeah, we've got uh, I got a little message uh, for everybody. Okay, so as a lot of you will know, I've been making videos mocking flat earthers for over five years now, and the arguments I hear over and over again just haven't changed. Now, Mikey Smith here, who is clearly as high as a mother yeah, is just another moron who thinks he has access to some super secret knowledge about the shape of the earth. So in keeping with what I usually do here on YouTube, I'm going to watch his video and respond to some of the very bizarre things he says. But I'm going to spring a few comments from the people who watch Mikey. Comments like this from Wintermill. It's a marvel of modern science that you be... <laughs> it's a marvel of modern science that you survived beyond infancy. <laughs> this is going to be proper tidy. Please subscribe. Please do your own research. Now, when you say do your own research, Mikey, do you mean like the time you tried to take the sun's temperature with a laser thermometer? Which, interestingly enough, is only an accurate way of measuring temperature if the object whose temperature you want to measure is about a car's length away. Unless, of course, you invested thousands of dollars in one, which can probably get a reading at about the length of a football field. Which is a sentiment shared by this commenter who says, yeah, Mikey, we You'll trust the one who measured the sun's temperature with a laser thermometer. <laughs> I used to believe we lived on a globe at one point too. But I did my own research. I ignored everything. Which includes, but is not limited to, science, common sense. So in relation to that, I found out that I was being lied to. Being lied to is horrible. Hold on a second, he probably doesn't mean by flat earthers, does he? Which is why I do what I do, because I can't stand the lies. I don't like to be lied to. That's why I get somewhat uh, blunt or to the point. Because people are telling me that I'm doing the wrong thing. And I'm wasting my time. And you didn't stop and think that they were maybe on to something? You know, given the fact that we've known for a fact that the Earth is on a blade spheroid for, I don't know, 2,000 years plus? But I'm not, because I have done the research for the last six or seven years, and there is not one single proof that we live on a globe spinning. Well, as shocking as this may be, but Mikey's right. There isn't one single proof that the Earth is on a blade spheroid. There are literally hundreds of them, you clown! Oh, and Round Earth Reality has a question for you, Mikey, in case you missed it in your own comment section. He asks if you've taken your meds today. <laughs> so please, do the research, then come talk to me. And we can have a conversation. And when you say have a conversation, and this is only based on my own personal experience of interacting with flat earthers, what you actually mean is step into my echo chamber, but you must only say the words I want to hear. How you are being taught the wrong things. Remember, ask them questions. Whoever is teaching you where you think you live. Now, to be fair, he's not completely wrong. Asking questions is a hugely important part of learning anything. Now, I don't get many kids watching my content. It's more crumblies like me. <laughs> but if any kids do happen across this video, please do not ask your teacher what shape the earth is. Or maybe do and let me know how long they laughed for. And while we're on the subject of kids, this commenter on Mikey's channel who's got a very difficult to say name asked, what happened to Stewie Griffin? He used to be much smarter when he was a baby. What the deuce? These comments are amazing. <laughs> Look for yourself, they're all from underneath Mikey's videos. And a little cartoon globe in your classroom or at the library does not prove where you live. A classroom globe is a great tool for learning because it's a mini model of our Earth. It shows what our planet looks like from space with all the continents, countries, oceans and lines for the equator and longitude and latitude. It helps students understand where places are in the world and how they relate to each other. I can't see the issue myself, but I'm sure Mikey will have a much better explanation for why we see globes in so many classrooms. I am apologizing for... 
Oh, that's actually really good of you, Mikey. Apologizing for what, though? Is it for what's said in this comment? From Oliver International, who says thank you for making the Flat Earth community look rational and sane. <laughs> look, you have been lied to. Um, I, I'm not sure how to t put this, but you, like I said, you've just... We've all been through it. We've all been through school. Yeah, and some of us didn't waste the opportunities that a good education afforded us. Are you just going to keep saying I don't like being lied to all the way through this video? Because I'm way too far invested into this one to choose another one, Mike. But I will if I have to. We'll, we'll see you now. <laughs> and laughing at me or giving me the finger is not science. No, you're right. It's not science. It's childish. And I, for one, can't stand childish people. <laughs> Oh, but we have scientists that can provide proof we live on a globe. No, 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 no. Now, I myself am not a scientist, but I would love to be able to debunk you. But for me to be able to debunk you, you first have to make some sort of claim. And so far, all you've done is bitch and complain because people are being mean to you and laughing at you. Oh, and you keep repeating that you don't like being lied to. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. <laughs> They give you lies in computer graphics, computer images, fake images. Do you mean C G I images? What the hell have you got to do to get a flat earther to say CGI these days? NASA films in a pool, man. They aren't going to space. You've got to do the research. So why haven't you then? Because if you had done the research, you'd know that yes, NASA do sometimes film in a pool. It's during training. And think about this, which I won't harp on about too much because I covered it in a video last week. But how come the bubbles go off in all different directions? If they were filming underwater instead of in space, wouldn't the bubbles just go up, Mikey? And not to mention how they make it look like it's not underwater, which is near as damn it impossible to do anyway. These are all things flat earthers don't seem to think of. Then you can come back and ridicule me. Ha! I'd forgotten we were ridiculing you as well. We haven't had a comment for a while, so let's have one now. Like this one from Alex. Tell me you're an idiot without telling me you're an idiot. Mikey Smith, challenge accepted. <laughs> I'm going to hopefully try to refrain from, from the uh, rude and sarcastic remarks. I can't believe I'm having to agree with you again. Sarcasm is without doubt the lowest form of wit. <laughs> Which is probably why my mother still says to me, if wit were shit, you'd be covered in it. You cannot tell me that I'm wrong. Or I'm loopy. I mean, I could. But so far in this video, I haven't felt the need to. Mainly because you're doing an excellent job of showing us all that you're wrong. Nobody thinks you're loopy, Mikey. Look. Look how encouraging this comment is. From Leaston88. What a sad, lonely, unhinged human being. It'll be okay, Mikey. There's people you can talk to. I've done the research. And I don't need to take the temperature of the air outside when I'm pointing my laser at the moon. Hang on a second. You've done that more than once. So you didn't think it was stupid just taking the sun's temperature. You thought you'd try the same thing with the moon. Really? I'm glad you're not loopy though, Mike. You want me to show you in person? Then I will. I've got no issues with that. I can show you how far my laser goes over 30 miles. Sorry, I, I don't mean to bring this up again, and I certainly don't want to revisit the loopy comment. The laser you use to take the sun's temperature and then take the moon's temperature, which you've just said yourself, reaches 13 miles. Can you, can you not see an issue there, Mike? The sun's not 13 miles away, and neither is the moon, pal. How does that happen over a curve? Think. I just said over a curve. Yeah, you heard what you said, and now I'm even more confused than ever because it's a laser thermometer. Is that right? I just want to be sure that I'm getting the facts straight. And you thought that by pointing it at the sun and subsequently at the moon that you could take their respective temperatures. So what difference would curve me? I, remember, you need to think about that. Another one, there are no real photos of Earth from space. That should blow your mind apart right now. I tell you what does blow my mind. 
the fact that you think there are no real photos of Earth taken from space. Now I'm going to show you two pictures which I know you won't like and you'll scream fake, but I can promise you these photos are not CGI. The first one, the Earthrise photo, was taken on Christmas Eve 1968 by the Apollo 8 mission. And the second one is the Blue Marble photo which was taken in 1972. Neither of them are composites. They are both single shot photographs of Earth from space. That's so weird. Why you would think they don't exist? It's almost as if flat earthers don't want them to exist. Hmm. There are no photos of Earth from space. No photos. All right. Well, what about videos? Look, I've even found footage of the ISS flying over Canada. Just for you, Mikey. And I know you're just going to call it fake or CGI anyway, so really, it was a complete waste of time. Very much like arguing with a flat earther. <laughs> Not CGI images I'm talking about. I'm talking about photos. But I just showed you two photos. Oh, damn, I missed the opportunity to use my CGI clip. Crap. I'm going to use it now. CGI. Think. Observe what you're looking at on your phone. Observe what you're looking at? I mean, it would be pretty difficult to observe something that you weren't looking at, or even to look at something that you weren't observing. I like your logic, Mike. Prove those circular images. Remember, Earth is not round. Sophia. There was a girl in my class in school called Sophia. She, she wasn't round. She was a bit chubbier than the other girls, but, uh... <laughs> sphere, according to you. Ah, you mean sphere. There's a difference between round and a sphere. I knew it. Good for you, Mikey. I knew that if I watched you for long enough, you'd eventually get something, right? A round object is any object that has a curved shape. It could be flat like a coin or a pizza. A sphere, on the other hand, is a specific type of round object that is perfectly symmetrical in all directions. It's like a basketball or the Earth which is technically an oblate spheroid, but I don't want your brain to explode. No matter which way you turn it, it looks the same from all angles. So while all spheres are round, not all round objects are spheres. Let's, uh, let's have a round of applause for Mikey, everyone. He deserves it. You know, he's got one thing right. You may want to research those two terms first. Dare I ask why? Because apart from flat earthers, nobody else is calling the earth round. We call it an oblate spheroid, which is what it is. A pizza is round. The tires on your car are round. But a basketball is a sphere. Not round. I've never seen a round table that looks like a basketball. You've got to do the research. Now, I don't want to be mean or anything, Mikey, but research into three-dimensional shapes. The thing that most people learn when they're about six years old in school. It's not exactly cutting-edge research, is it? Airplanes do not fly upside down to Chile. Well, no, of course they don't, because that would just be silly, and it would make a very uncomfortable flight as well. You'd never be able to take your seatbelt off. They literally have to fly upside down on your ball. Because when you look from way out here, from fake space, and Chile is down here, how is the plane supposed to be flying? Upside down, because the ground is always below the plane. Exactly, so you've just answered your own question. The reason planes don't have to fly upside down when they fly to Chile is because the aeroplane is flying within Earth's atmosphere and the ground is always below it. I, 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 I'm... Well, I couldn't have said it better myself, Mike. Anyway, huge shout out to these lovely people for joining my Patreon or becoming a channel member here on YouTube. It's thanks to the support of people like this that means I get to do this as my full-time job. 
If anyone's interested in helping me out in other ways, I've got an unlisted playlist here on YouTube where I put all the videos I'm going to respond to, and I've made it into a collaborative playlist so that anyone I share the link with can also add videos to it for me to respond to. So if you think you'd be able to help me out and you'd like to do it, then join my Discord server and send me a DM, and I will share the link with you there. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in a few days. Oh, you're still here then. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something new. If you did, then you'll probably enjoy this video as well. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all again very soon or in a few minutes if you do decide to watch this recommended video. <laughs> Love you, bye.